Now, there are some constraints that we have to consider because we have to make sure that there is some continuity in our solution. In particular, we know that at x equals 0, we have a barrier. The barrier starts and then it will end here at x equal to L. And this is the second zone, okay, second zone. Here we have the first zone and we have some solution here. Then we have the third zone. And we have to make sure that the solutions at x equal to 0 and x equal to L are the same, okay? So the function psi, psi 1, psi 2, must be equal at x equal to 0 and at x equal to L, psi 2 and psi 3 in that case. And also the derivatives of the function psi with respect to x, because the derivative of the function psi with respect to x is related to momentum. If you recall, the momentum operator is just related to the gradient. So it is h bar gradient and we also have a constant minus i h bar the gradient. Okay, and the gradient in this case, it is just equal to the derivative with respect to x because we are just considering a monodimensional example. Okay, we are just, we just have the variable x. We don't have y and z here. So we have to make sure that momentum is, of course, uh, continuous. It, it has the same values. Uh, it does not have multiple values at x equals 0 and x equals 12. So there must be continuity. And we have to make sure that the derivative is also continuous, the derivative of the function psi. And, uh, of course, the condition must be imposed instead of on psi, we have to impose it on w because w depends on x. Okay, We already know that the function u, u1, u2, u3, they are just equal to each other because they are equal to e to the minus i e t over h bar. Okay, so they are just equal and that's okay. But we have to make sure that w is the same. So we, what we have to impose is that w2 calculated at 0 is equal to w1 calculated at 0 and also w2 prime is calculated at 0 and w1 prime is calculated at 0 and these two, function, these two functions must be equal. The, the derivatives must be the same. And we also have other two conditions for w2 and w3 evaluated at L. So w2 of, of L is equal to w3 of L and w2 prime of L is equal to w3 prime of L. Okay, so we have to impose these conditions and we have four equations here. Now we have four equations but remember that we have six coefficients because there are two coefficients here two coefficients for w2 and now for w2 remember that we have to take a look at the second row here whereas here for w3 and w1 we have to look at the first row so when when e is greater than zero we also have two coefficients for w1 b and c so six is not okay there are more coefficients than equations because we have four equations so we still have to find a way to solve uh, to solve this this problem because we want to find the, the constants and in particular we will get rid right now of something that we don't have to consider in particular the uh, we don't have to consider the reflected wave in the third solution here what is the reflected wave it is this quantity we don't have to consider this so g should be set equal to zero because because after, after the barrier, there is no other barrier. So the wave propagating from the left to the right, which is just this part, is going to propagate, but it's not going to be reflected. So we don't have to consider a reflected part. Okay, because there is no other barrier. If there was another barrier, now, uh, of course, there would be a term like that. There, there would be some term G, which multiplies the reflected part e to the minus i square root of 2me divided by h bar squared times x okay but we can get rid of that and now we have five coefficients to calculate but we have four equations now this is not a problem okay this is not a problem because another equation remember would be related to the normalization of the wave function because remember that in general when we have a wave function we know that 
the mod of the wave function squared and the wave function is of course in this case the product between the functions w with the functions u and you can of course write down a, a, a wave uh, function for each zone the first zone the second zone and the third zone and if you integrate the, the wave function dx so the magnitude squared of the wave function dx you will get some probability of course and you, you can normalize the probability okay you can usually usually you you will set it equal to one okay and you have to integrate this over some volume in, in, in general if the wave functions go to zero at infinity you can also integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity but this is not the case because you see that we have some some uh, complex exponentials here which are of course related to trigonometric functions the cosine and the sine and they will not go to zero at infinity therefore you have to choose some volume here so you have to to integrate over some volume in this case it is just an interval a finite interval you can choose uh, an interval and and you can you can uh, you have another equation here and of course you have five equations and and uh, five unknowns okay but we don't need to to use this condition now we don't need to use that in particular what we uh, what we are interested in is just we want to find all the coefficients in particular what we want to find is this coefficient f because this tells us if the wave uh, is propagating after the barrier right because we are in the third zone so if we find a non-zero f we can calculate in, in principle we can calculate the probability that the, the wave propagates through the barrier okay because f is related to the to, to the propagation after the barrier that's important to understand we we can find the expression for f and we will do that next time it is just equal to something here that we have to, to derive and it will multiply b so it, we will see that we, we can we can find the ratio f with respect to b and b is the incident wave in the first zone b is this uh, sorry it's this coefficient here okay so we we want to to find the ratio f divided by b so if we find this ratio we find how much of the incident wave which is related to this uh, coefficient b will propagate through the barrier and this is related to coefficient f of course and now if we want to to write it in terms of probabilities what we want to find is f divided by b but we have to take the mod squared of that this is called also the transmission coefficient and this is what we want to find we will do the derivation next time but now we have set up set up the problem what we have to do is we have to consider just these four equations now we have we can we can write down four equations and we will have to solve them okay and from here we will see that we can find this transmission coefficient we will see that it will be non-zero but we will also make some other considerations we will see that uh, it will increase when the length of when the width of the barrier decreases and vice versa if the if the width of the barrier increases the probability that the incident wave propagates through the barrier will decrease okay because it will be more difficult to penetrate the barrier if the barrier is wider okay so this is more or less what we want to what we want to to find the transmission coefficient and i told you some interesting concepts that are very important to understand if you want to really grasp this uh, quantum tunneling